Hey, welcome back to Rise of the Marcus Plays Kingdom Hearts in the last episode. Uh, we pretty much just did a mini game with Tigger and Hundred Acre Wood. No big deal. So, right now we are in Halloween Town. And I've vented on and on about how I thoroughly love Nightmare for Christmas. And this game actually captures like that kind of feel of Nightmare for Christmas perfectly. And you should see like the costumes like Sword Donald and Goofy are sporting. Yeah, look at them. The only thing that weirds me out about their costumes is the fact that Donald's like torso is like split in half, and that always bugged me for some reason. Like how? This place sure this sure is a spooky place. I bet the people here are scary looking too. Don't worry, we'll look spooky too. If they scare us, we'll scare them right back. You think so? Yeah, whose idea was this in the first place? I don't know what the point of these things were. I mean, you could hit them and then they'll light up for a second. Eh. The only thing I have to nitpick about this world is that it's a bit cramped. Oh, this is heartless. By the way, um, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but I switched out Goofy's shield to the um, the Mithril shield because I noticed like the the Mithril shield is actually the more balanced of like all the shields that you could buy. And um, these heartless, for some reason, are not attacking us. If you thought like the search ghosts were cre uh, creepy before, then um, they're ubi they're ubi bleh. I cannot speak today. They are even creepier now because, yeah, they're just kind of sitting there. Anyway, something blew up, and let's go check it out. And now, allow me to introduce the master of terror, the king of nightmares, Jack Ellington! All hail the Pumpkin King! Bravo, Dad! Bravo! Those ghosts will be a Bravo for what? For the controlling Heartless or coming out of that fountain all nonchalantly? Thank you. But their movement still needs work. It's not scary enough. I want to strike bone chilling terror. I'm going to consult the doctor. Oh man, I have to say, Chris Sarandon, like, pretty much is the official voice actor for Jack, who always has been his voice actor, but, uh, the performance he just gave just now. Ugh. Oh, by the way, um, on the subject of how much I love Nightmare for Christmas, I, I do have to say, I really admire Jack's character. Because this character is like so full of passion. I mean, granted, in the movie, like... I, th this might spoil it for like some who have never seen Nightmare for Christmas before. But if you haven't yet, go watch it. Please, I urge you. It's such a good movie. Uh, it's on Netflix, I believe. Last time I checked. I mean, fucking Netflix is always changing their library. But, um, Do you think yeah, it should be on Netflix. But anyway, basically in the movie, Jack Skellington, you know, discovers Christmas and wants to try it for himself. And just the way that, like, he takes on this new passion, you know, with such devotion and such, like, confidence is, like, always admirable. I mean, even though it's misplaced, you just can't help but, like, side with him because, you know, he's just doing what he wants to do and what he loves doing the most. You really gonna unlock it for them? Why not? If they succeed, we won't have to fight Heartless, right? Besides, I want to see the Heartless dance too, don't you? Yeah, not really. Hi, that was but yeah, his character is like so admirable too. Well, I mean, I already said that, but... Well done, Sora. Um, like one clear example I can point out um, of where like Jack's character truly shines is um, the song sequence Poor Jack. And 
that song is so good because it really shows how you know delusional Jack has been this entire time and where you know his misplaced passion for Christmas lied truly and the fact that like even though that he tried you know real hard in order to achieve Christmas on his own the fact that he was able to go out and just try it anyway was just really, it really gets to you because for one thing, you feel both proud and sorry for Jack at the same time because even though that he did try something, he did try his like damnness in order to like try to make this thing happen and when it didn't in the end, the fact that, you know, he was able to go so far and like still able to get so far, that to me like truly shines. Because, being Jack's character, he was able to convince himself out of depression, basically, during that song. He was able to convince himself that, you know, you know, his passion may be misplaced, but it's not entirely in vain, because at least he can say that, you know, he tasted something swell while he was doing it, to quote a little bit of the song. But yeah, his character is like one of the, yeah, fuck yes, I'm gonna put Jack in my party. Sorry, Goofy, but every time I play Halloween Town Kingdom Hearts, Jack has always got to be in my party. How's it going, Jack? Fucking love you, man. Oh my god, you're really tall. I mean, jeez, man. I mean, I can only like stare up at your crotch, but let's face it, I mean, you're a skeleton, you ain't got nothing down there anyway. Oh, God, I love Nightmare for Christmas so much. Actually, speaking of Nightmare for Christmas in video games, um, I don't know, I don't know if it, I don't know if anyone's ever played, uh, the sequel or prequel game, like, Pumpkin King or, um, what was the other one? Uh, Ogie's Revenge? Those are okay games. I mean, the plots to those games aren't really, you know, that gripping. And Ogie's Revenge is kind of, meh. I mean, since Ugi's Revenge was a video game, and by the way, it's like the closest to a Nightmare for Christmas sequel that anyone's ever going to get. Um, the, the plot for that is pretty much like, you know, Ugi's back and, you know, we gotta stop him. Oh my god, look how much damage we did. Jeez, man. I wonder... I wonder, like, what level I'm actually supposed to be. Because I don't know if I'm, like, up ahead or what, or... Because I seem relatively strong for this. That Thunder, like, took him out, like, in a, in a flash. Um... But yeah, Ogi's Revenge is, like, the closest thing to Nightmare for Christmas sequel that anyone's ever gonna, anyone is ever going to get. So, you can quit bitching about, like, how Nightmare for Christmas should have its sequel. Which, by the way, I seriously don't agree with, and, like, Tim Burton doesn't agree with a Nightmare for Christmas sequel either, but... Basically, the plot to Oogie's Revenge is, yeah, just, Oogie's back, and you gotta stop him and stuff, so... It's nothing too spectacular. I mean, it's a video game, it's, like, you know, of course gonna follow the plot of, like you know, defeat the bad guy, and, like, there's not that much else going on except, like, the obstacles that you have to face. I mean, we still go to Halloween Town, we still go to Christmas Town. We go to... Excuse me. We go to the Hinderlands, like, a little bit. But, again, it's nothing too spectacular if you're looking for, like, a gripping story. Then again, the Night of Christmas, uh, Night of Christmas's story was always kind of relatively simple. Um... It's also kind of the reason why I like it, because it had a very simple story, and, you know, all this sort of stuff. So, can I climb these things? Hold on, let me jump on top of that. I, I guess I can. There's something... Hold on. Yeah, there's, there's something up there. We just can't get to it yet, I don't think. Because I think we have to jump from some sort of angle. Uh, where can we jump from? Because now I'm trying to think. Ah, uh, whatever. We'll cross that. We'll cross. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, where are we supposed to go? Oh, the graveyard. 
So yeah, it. By the way, Oogie's Revenge, like from what I hear, is like very similar to Devil May Cry. So yeah, go fig. Made by Capcom. I feel like they reuse a lot of their same kind of game play elements. Let's check this place too once the Heartless are here and out of our way. Why are the Heartless in our way? Well, there are now. By the way, um, Pumpkin King, I rarely played because of the fact that, like, it was so bland of a platformer that it was, eh. Um, it was basically how Jack became the Pumpkin King. And, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure you could find the cutscenes for both games online. I mean, if you're, like, an Ever for Christmas fan and curious. I mean, you can play Oogie's Revenge, don't get me wrong. It's an... Oh, it's a pretty okay game, honestly. I would probably give it a 6 out of 10. <laughs> Classic IGN rating. Zero. Have you seen Sally honestly, that's probably what IGN gave that game, honestly. Now that I think about it. Whatever, I don't watch IGN. IGN is pretty much like a laughing stock now, as far as like uh, the game industry goes. When it comes to like... You know, finding opinions on like different games. Yeah, definitely. You mean this? Obtain forget me not. Jack, huh? I, have a bad I see what you did there. Why don't you try something else? There's still time. Nothing could be Dolly, where are you looking? You're just like so dead eyed right there. They'll dance just as I envision it. Trust me. You're going to love it. By the way, there's, this is something that I never got about Never for Christmas. The fact that they incorporated like a love, that they, incor they incorporated like a love interest into the story, as well as like, um, like a major villain. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Never for Christmas was uh, based on a poem that Tim Burton wrote, and the only characters that were to be featured in that poem were. Jack, Santa Claus, and Zero. And they also, in the poem, they mention kids, but of course that refers to Lost Shock and Barrel. Um, so, yeah, they decided, they decided to incorporate a villain, being Oogie Boogie, and a love interest. Which I never got, because the love interest thing, like... As much as I love Nightmare for Christmas, like, I, I never really found myself that invested into the romance, or, uh, the romance between Jack and Sally. Uh, honestly, I, I know I'm probably, like, pissed off, like, some people out there, but, yeah, I don't know, it's just kind of, like, not exactly, like, shoved in there. Is there no safe point in here? Oh. Oops, sorry. But I don't know, it's just kind of like pointless. Same goes with Oogie Boogie. Who, by the way, never has a clear motivation in that movie. Which has always bugged me. He's just kind of there, like... He kidnaps Santa Claus, but... For what, really? At least in Kingdom Hearts, they actually give him a purpose. I'll be jiggered. Got no hands. Somewhere in the graveyard. Like I said, this is a very cramped world. Again, a little bit of a nitpick, but I honestly... Yeah, now that I think about it, um... The world that... What they changed with uh, Halloween Town and Kingdom Hearts 2... 
Um, they ch they like changed like a lot, and one of those changes was making Halloween Town like a lot bigger, which was greatly appreciated by the way. Because I always found like Halloween Town's world was always kind of cramped, and yeah, like the fact that you can go to Christmas Town and uh, Kingdom Hearts Two was a huge major bonus. It's like honestly probably my favorite world from that game. Alright. Is it all the heartless? Yeah. So, can I. Okay, there we go. Am I gonna be finding more heartless, or is this where the mayor is? Oh, that's right, you have to do this stupid shit with the mayor. He won't give you this. He won't give you, like, the surprise element for the heart. Unless you play a stupid minigame. Ghost, ghosts rise from those tombs. Let's. Oh, check the tombstones in the order that the ghosts appear. Okay. That one. Shit! Okay, that one. That one. Fuck. Whatever, I'm pretty sure where the other one is. Oh, god, um... Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by a toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Oh, hey, cool. Splendid, now I'll go look at the pumpkin. Cool, um... Where? Fucking camera. Hey! This is probably the surprise, isn't it? Jack in the box. Haha! <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, if you go through here, then that'll, that'll put you to the spiral hill. In this game, it's called, um, it's called something else. I don't know what it's called, actually. Alright, let's go through here for shits and giggles. Yeah, this takes you to, ah, man, like, Spiral Hill has, like, so many different names. Like, I've heard some people call it Spiral Hedge, some people call it Spiral Hill, some people call it Moonlight Hill. Like, wow. By the way, that's kind of weird to me. Isn't it weird that, like, there's, like, a Christmas tree-shaped door when, like, Jack doesn't even know anything about Christmas? This is supposed to be Halloween Town, not... Whatever, I guess that could be a nod to the movie, I suppose. But we won't go to Christmas Town until the sequel can March 2. Eh. Let's just move forward, I guess. Get out of my way. I could be using like a stronger keyblade. But no. Uh, let's just de uh, deliver this shit to the doctor. Where is that bad? Again, like, it's kind of cramped and like, it's... Oh, okay, here. I can tell you that much, like, um... How they designed, uh, the world and, um... How they designed Halloween Town and Oogie's Revenge, I think is like, ten times better than... Uh, what Kingdom Hearts did, combined with 1 and 2. Bingo. This time it's sure to work. Yeah. Oh man, that's bogus. That is really bogus, dude. They, they just fucking tripped a cripple, man. Dude, that's totally not cool. <laughs> Fucking asshole kids. Man, if I if I was a parent, I would I'd give him a good belt spanking. I've heard of like horror stories, by the way, of like um I've heard horror stories about kids getting the belt when they were kids if they've done something bad. 
Luckily, I was never one of those kids. Um, my mom would usually, like, like, this was when I was, like, five or so. Um, uh, from what I remember, like, sometimes she would just, like, smack me on the behind. Th that was about it, as far as, like, physical punishment goes. Other than that, though, it was always the corner. God damn, that fucking corner. There's nothing like putting some guilt on a child's soul, like putting your child in the corner right there. Especially if they've done something bad like I did whenever, like... Um, like, take for example, like, when I would flake out on homework. It was always the corner. Well, not really. It wasn't homework, but like... Oh man, it's hard to think of an example right now because... Man. Sometimes... You know, when you get to my age, 20 and up, you forget what being a kid is like. To this day, I've kind of forgotten what it's like to be sitting in classrooms that have, like, cabinet inside where you can put your books in. Or, like, how cramped the lockers were. And, man. There's a lot I've forgotten about, you know, being in an elementary school classroom. Not sure if it's for the better or worse, but I don't know. I'm pretty sure, like, you know. Man. I don't know. Is it just me, or, like, his. Like, people's memories of their childhoods, like, kind of faded away over the years? I don't know if it's just me. If it's just me, then, well, consider my sorry ass, like, a sad and pathetic existence. Man, what I wouldn't give to be ten years younger. That way I wouldn't have to worry about the stupid fucking car! Ugh. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go after these... Kids, shall we? Oh, there's an empty place in my boat. <laughs> oh, it's one of these fuckers. So these are basically like the white mushrooms where if you help them, then they'll give you shit. Like this one's gimmick is that I have to keep them up in the air as long as possible, which is fucking impossible, by the way. Fuck off. I don't have time for your shit. And by the way, these guys drop, like, magic goo. Which I'm gonna need for, like, this very uber special weapon later. You'll know what it is. It's the, uh, the very legendary Ultima weapon. For all you noobs out there who are not familiar with Kingdom Hearts. It is the most powerful Keyblade in the entire game. And usually you can only get it, um... Usually you can only... Come on, why can't I get this chest? Let me get this chest. Can I climb this thing? Up there. There we go. Motherfucker. Come on. But yeah, this most powerful keyblade, uh, I don't think you'll be able to obtain until like the later half of the game. I know you gotta do some shit with, um... You know, obtaining the mad, uh, the mysterious goo, or mystery goo rather. And oh, there's another chest up there. So yeah, it's kind of a pain to get it, but oh man, once you get it, you're gonna be feeling like a fucking king. You are. You're gonna be feeling like king of the goddamn world. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! All right, hold on. Me. Damn it! Let me just. Let me just. Ah! I didn't press it fast enough. Alright. Ah, yeah! Ah, no, you bastard. Damn it! I know I can get this. Just... Come on. Damn it! Do I have to get that ability for you, too? Oh, I 
I got, I got it, I got it. No, 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 no. I was banging my head on a stupid thing. If only I could. Oh, cool. I got it. Cool. What is it? Oh, defense up. Wow, alright. That's actually pretty good that I actually got that. I'm not gonna use it now. Let's go to Uki's Manor. Oh, um, by the way, this is the only area in the game where this is like a temporary area. You'll see right here. Yeah, see that manor right here? Won't be there for long. Let's just say that, um, something happens to it. And by the way, this manor actually got a cool-ass upgrade. In the movie, it was just like... Kind of bland looking, but in here it's like all lively and crap. Oh no! No wait, I think there's a safe point up ahead. Yeah, I think there's a safe point like later. I just remembered something. There's a trinity in this manner, and if you don't get it. Wow, that heartless just jumped off the edge. That's really fucking funny. Um, well, I can't do anything about this door or this chest now until this heartless dies. And he's dead. Cool. This trinity up here that if you don't get, then it's gone forever. And I kind of want to 100% all these trinities. So, um, I actually don't know where that trendy is. Alright, let me just take care of this fucker. Um, uh, alright. Um, uh, alright. YOU FUCKING SHIT! When your day is long... Look at that. There's an ether. Did I get this chest back here? I did, right? Uh, yes, I guess so. So, um, uh, what's over there? I kind of want to see what's over there, but I don't want to... Uh, can I get back? Oh, gee! Thanks, Jack, for pushing me off. I... Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything over here. Uh, screw it. I'm just gonna jump down. Whee! Oh, oh, wow. Um, I'm actually not supposed to be here yet, I don't think. Because that actually leads to, um, where Oogie Boogie is. That's the boss room right there. At least I, I think that's what it is. Could be something else. Um,. Uh, but yeah, there is a trinity that's like on Uggie's Manor somewhere that I don't know where it is though. Dude, this spell is gonna be like my go-to thing. Like, let me tell you. Um, yeah, I I don't know actually where this trinity is, and now I don't know how to get back up. Screw me. What's in here? What? What? What, what? what the hell did I just do? Um. I. Uh, what? What the hell just happened? Um. I examine? Oh, oh, that just takes you back down. What the fuck is... the hell is going on, man? Oh, great, now I can't get back up because I can't examine this stupid thing. That is... Man, it's... It's, like, really been a while since, like, I've played this level. And, like, I think that's more apparent now because, like... Oogie's Manor, like, is only here for, like, so long, alright? It's not like a Kingdom Hearts 2 where you can go back to a level and, like, you can do some extra stuff that's, like, involved with the story. Yeah, there's none of that here. 
Once you clear a level, it's like a one-shot thing, basically. Bada bing, bada boom. To the keyhole, boom. You're done with the world. Move on. And uh, that's what Kingdom Hearts 1 is, basically. And these Heartless are getting very annoying. Oh, I just wasted some MP there. Whatever, that's fine. Ah! Uh, or just fire that and thunder you. I'm telling you, man, thunder is going to be my shit. That's what I'm going to be rocking most of the time. Will this thing come back down, please? Where are you? You are... You are stuck there. You are not coming down, are you? Okay, then. I'm just gonna... Gonna come back and... That thing's not coming down, is it? Well, suck me sideways. Looks like I'm gonna have to go over here and reset the goddamn thing. Ugh. You go back up here. I hope that resets it. It's kind of weird how it's positioned like this. Like I have to jump over here and... Okay, it's back down. Alright. So, fire you. No, 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 Why? God. Oh. What the fuck? Why didn't you come back down the other time? Asshole. Oh wait, um... Dude, I am, like... I will find this goddamn trinity. Whoop. Um, that would be my timer. Um, I don't think I've ever, like, commented on, like, the ringtone for my timer. Um... I have this ringtone that's like taken straight from the original Iron Man movie, which is um, the music to wear like Iron Man suits up, and that's what my ringtone is. I'll, ch I'll change it to something else. But uh, anyway, that about does it for this episode, so in the next episode, we are going to confront Lock, Shock, and Barrel and give them a good weapon on the behind. So I'll see you guys then. Peace.